Welcome, you are lucky to have found this video. Summarize detail about dosage form two lab, where this video elaborates much details about the lab preparations done. And it's a revision that compiles all the dosage form labs that are done in 402. So welcome and watch this video until the end. And at the end of the day, remember to subscribe, like, and share. To begin with, the dosage form lab 402 in summary entails the following objectives, which the first objective is being uh, the performance side of it. Now on the performance side of it, we have first to know the use of the preparation and exact procedure of being it. And then the role of ingredients, each and every ingredient has, each and every, has a specific role. And result, the ultimate result, at the end of the day, the result is preparation of the intended uh, dosage form, which was there at the objective in the first place. Then the label, how to make the label and to attach the label to the, uh, the dispensing bottle. Now, number two, calculations of the reduced formula. That is, you are using the reducing factor. Number two, you need to, use, to know the use of the preparation, the procedure as well, and the role of ingredient, storage, and result. And number three is to know of various monographs, to know various monographs of aromatic waters, syrups, spirit, mixtures, elixirs, solutions, magma, suspensions, emulsions, ointment, and borders uh, as performed in accordance to the, to the lab. Now, in aromatic waters, for example, we had the 25 ml double strength chloroform water, PP, 25 ml concentrated cinnamon water, PP. And on the category of spirits, we can have examples of peppermint spirit, PP, 15 ml, chloroform spirit, PP, 20 ml. In syrups, we can have examples of 20 gram syrup, PP, symbol syrup, USP, 15 ml, 25 ml of ferrous sulfate syrup USP. And on the mixtures, we can have examples of pediatric chuck mixture 25 ml PP, compound sodium chloride mixture 25 ml PP. In elixirs, we can have the two, the examples of uh, elixirs of sacharine PPC 20 ml. Now regarding the solutions, we have the examples of pediatric ferrous sulfate oral solution PP 25 ml. And on magma, examples could include the bentamite magma USP 20 gram and suspension, we can take the example of calamine topical suspension USP 25 ml. And on emulsions, we can take the examples of mineral oil, emulsion uh, oil USP. And on borders, we can use the 10 gram oral rehydrating salt PP. And finally, on the ointment, we can use the example of 20 gram calamine ointment. Basing on the above examples, there are some experiments done, and it could include the, to prepare double strength chloroform water PP 25 ml, to prepare 30 ml concentrated cinnamon water PP, to prepare 15 ml peppermint spirit PP. And number four is to prepare 20 ml chloroform spirit PP, five to prepare 20 gram of syrup PP, six to prepare 15 ml syrup, symbo syrup USP, seven to prepare 25 ml of vera sulfate syrup USP, eight to prepare bariatric chuck mixture 25 ml PP, nine to prepare compound sodium chloride mixture 25 ml PP, 10 to prepare 20 ml of elixirs of sacharine PPC, 11 to prepare 25 ml of pediatric ferra salvet oral solution PP, 12 to prepare magma USP 20 gram, 13 to prepare calamine topical suspension USP 25 ml, 14 to prepare 25 ml of mineral oil emulsion USP, 15 to prepare 20 gram calamine ointment, 16 to prepare 10 gram oral rehydrating salt. Now, those are the objectives of the 16 examples that are available here. Now, the first and the universal factor here is the reducing factor. Having known how to handle the reducing factor, there will be no issue in reducing your quantities. 
using the master formula or the official formula. Once you have the official formula, it will be simpler for you to work out the rest of the reduced formula. Now, reducing for reduced formula, you have to apply, you just multiply the reducing factor, uh, you say the reducing factor times the quantity you have on the official formula and you'll get your reduced formula. Now, on reducing factor, we say the quantity that you require, that's in volume or in grams, divided by the total volume or grams, uh, which is provided in the official formula. So it's like the total, that one, which you, when you make up or when you sum up the constituents, it makes up a given volume, if it is not for a QS, but for the QS, you just take the total volume QS as the total volume there. Then you just have that as quantity you required, like you are told prepare 25 ml, you just, it, need, it means you are saying 25 divided by maybe if it is a thousand, you Q, uh, the QS says to a thousand, then it is 20 divided by a thousand or 25 divided by a thousand. So that's that's a symbol and it's something that it will be universal all along. So let's use the ratio. For example, here we have water 5 ml and uh, purified water a thousand, uh, I mean chloroform water 5 ml and purified water to uh, at, uh, QS to a thousand. So you are required to make 25 ml then we say that uh, the, the procedure of uh, 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 obtaining the reducing factor, you say 25 divided by 1,000. So as you get 0 0.25. Uh, regardless, the value could be different or the value here could not be QS to 1,000 ml. It could, be so, it could be just some ingredients and there's no QS. So when there's no QS, you have to add the total ingredients component. So like, for example, chloroform water, uh, 5 ml and then uh, purified water you just provided with maybe 500 ml so you just come and sum them 5 ml plus 500 ml where there is no qs but where there is qs you take the final volume as the total now a brief summary of the 16 performance done in the lab and it it has various categories uh, the first category is aromatic water and by definition Aromatic water is a clear saturated aqueous solution of volatile oils or other volatile substances prepared by either distillation or by dissolving substances. And these aromatic water are saturated aqueous solution or volatile oils, for example, rose oil or peppermint oil. Now, aromatic water possesses an odor or test similar to that of the plant substance from which they were derived from. So these aromatic water are clear and free from solid impurities and foreign odor. So uh, we can look some of the types of the aromatic water for us to get it clear. That is, we have the symbol aromatic waters, which this contains purified water as solvent. And this means that they do not contain alcohol. They are mainly used as vehicles, for example, chloroform water. Number two, we have the concentrated aromatic water. This contains alcohol as solvent. So the difference between Simbo and concentrated aromatic water is that in Simbo, we have water as solvent, but in concentrated aromatic water, we have alcohol as solvent. That is the major difference. So for example, in peppermint is, you can say peppermint is a concentrated aromatic water, while Simbo aromatic water would include chloroform water. Now, methods of preparation of aromatic uh, waters include the distillation method, solution method, alternate solution method. Now, examples of these uh, aromatic waters include cinnamon water, NF, orange flower water, NF, camber water, PP, concentrated PP water, uh, uh, water peppermint water, PP, concentrated KIA waters, PPC, concentrated cinnamon water, PPC. Now, main uses of aromatic water. They are mainly used in perfuming and flavoring agents. Now, they are also used as cumulative excipients, vehicles, and bases. Remember, they are derived, they have the scent and the smell of and the odor of the, the plants they are derived from. So that's why they are used as perfuming and flavoring. Now, aromatic water then included the 25 ml double strength chloroform water PP, 25 ml concentrated cinnamon water PP. Now, the objective of the double strength chloroform was to prepare 25 ml of double strength chloroform water PP and the master formula provided was uh, chloroform 
5 ml flavoring uh, and uh, the function or the role of this ingredient chloroform so it was a flavoring agent now I, it will be simpler when i say that uh, here to prepare 25 ml double strength chloroform p water pp we had a master formula having two ingredients that is the chloroform and the purified water qs now on the chloroform we took 5 ml and on this the role of the ingredient chloroform itself was used as a flavoring agent and on the other side water was used mainly as a solvent now the reducing factor as we had seen earlier how to calculate you just say because you are preparing 25 ml and there is a qs of a thousand you just say 25 divided by a thousand i think we are good to go okay we go to the procedure procedure is very simple we calibrate the dispensing bottle there is a spelling error there now at 25 ml using the tap water after calibrating we discard the tap water and try and dry the bottle also spilling error there now number three we pipette out calculated amount of chloroform water and transfer it to the dispensing bottle now after pipetting out the calculated amount of chloroform we dissolve the chloroform by adding small amount of water and shaking it uh, we continue adding sufficient amount of purified water to make up the volume and finally we will attach and fix our label now that is just in brief now uses uh, chloroform water is used as flavoring agent, cuminative, and preservative. So keep in mind that and remember by heart storage. It is stored on a tightly closed container. Expiry is one week. And on the monograph, we add the chloroform, which we need to remember that it is a clear, colorless, volatile liquid. That's why we keep it on a tightly closed container. Now it has characteristic smell, which is uh, with a slight sweet test. So the test is sweet, the smell is characteristic, uh, the, the, it is a liquid, so that is the state. So at the end of the day, it is easier for you to remember these ones because it's a clear liquid, it is a volatile liquid, uh, the smell is characteristic, and uh, the test is slight sweet. So that is uh, this uh, chloroform is slightly soluble in water and miscible in ethanol 95%. Chloroform is used as preservative, fecal flavoring agent, and is more stable and stored on a tightly closed container away from heat. So it means it dissociates when heated. Now about the, about the purified water. So purified water, we say it is a a clear colorless, odorless, tasteless liquid whose impurities have been removed. So it is soluble in water and relatively soluble in alcohol. It is mainly used as a solvent, raw, mat raw material, an ingredient of a mastical preparation. It is also, it should also be stored and protected against ionic and organic contamination. Now that was about the first experiment. Experiment two, we are required to prepare 30 ml of concentrated cinnamon water pp now this one we first begin from the reducing formula so when you are given 30 ml you go to the uh, final line that is about on the official formula you are seeing qs a thousand ml so it means it is 30 divided by a thousand and you have your reducing factor once you have your reducing factor you come to the ingredients, you multiply it by the reducing factor you found and you will get the, the reduced formula for the preparation. Now that is, uh, I hope you are getting and with time you will get uh, to be used with this. Now, uh, cinnamon oil, 20 ml. Uh, cinnamon is used as flavoring agent in this case and ethanol is used as a solvent or preservative. So water here is uh, used as a vehicle and solvent so the reducing factor is 0 0.3 now procedure we first calibrate i think the universal procedure for every preparation you have to begin with calibration of the dispensing bottle so procedure number one even if you will forget the rest make sure number one procedure you don't forget that is calibration of the dispensing bottle don't begin your procedure without calibrating the dispensing bottle so make sure when you are writing you write number one as always, and should stick on your mind that the first thing to do in the procedure is to calibrate your dispensing bottle or whatever you are given, maybe 
uh, you are using a dispensing pack or you are using a paper i mean it should if it is a paper or a, a special container or a special packaging then it has to be uh, it, it does not need to be calibrated but on a dispensing bottle you have to calibrate it and for this you have to write it as the first now on the empty bottle leave it to try empty the bottle and leave it to try now take calculated amount of the ethanol into the dispensing bottle that is we are preparing the concentrated cinnamon water pp and remember we are using uh, the ingredients which is the cinnamon oil ethanol and water so that's it now after taking the calculated amount of ethanol into the dispensing into the dispensing bottle we pipette out calculated amount of cinnamon oil into the into the bottle that's in the in our bottle we have the ethanol and we have the now we are adding it to uh, we are adding cinnamon into ethanol so means uh, we need to dissolve cinnamon in ethanol by vigorously shaking after that we gradually we gradually add purified water while shaking and then we make up the volume to our 30 ml now use of this preparation is flavoring agent so you see most of the preparations done about the aromatic water the aromatic water mainly are used as flavoring agent so in case you meet along about this uh, cinnamon and uh, anything to do with aromatic water so you need to remember it is a flavoring agent so storage of this is that of the cinnamon we need to know that you store on a little closed container uh, at room temperature and pressure away from direct sunlight so because we say that uh, cinnamon this aromatic water are uh, very uh, volatile they can easily evaporate that's why we need to keep under that condition which is a tightly closed container and away from direct sunlight which can cause its dissociation expiry is 10 to 15 days uh, there are two monographs here on this experiment too that is the cinnamon oil is the first one and on this cinnamon oil which is C9H8O. Now, it, cinnamon oil is generally a yellow colored liquid with a characteristic cinnamon like smell and spicy taste. Yeah, so the taste is spicy. Uh, the smell is cinnamon like, that is a characteristic, and the liquid itself is yellow. Now, the, what we've done so far, they are liquids. So, it is extracted from leaves and parts of cinnamon and obtained by steam distillation. Cinnamon oil is insoluble in water but miscible in ethanol. So used as flavoring agent, insecticide, protective film over metal surface against corrosion. Stored in light resistant and tightly closed container. And then one important thing is never rub cinnamon or massage cinnamon oil directly on the skin unless diluted with a carrier oil. And on number two, we have to look on the monograph for ethanol. Ethanol is C2H5OH. Now it is also a colorless, volatile, and flammable liquid that is odorless. So remember, it's colorless, odorless, volatile liquid. So it is merely is uh, instructed by it is merely extracted by the process of fermentation there is a problem here also writing problem it is merely ex extracted by the process of fermentation now uh, dry and wet meal processes are used to extract from uh, ethanol from fruit vegetables and grains ethanol is soluble in water so you can it is also soluble in uh, methanol ethanol and propanol there are some writing errors there uh, and the use for this ethanol is that it is used uh, for bacterial activity. It is used as a disinfectant in topical preparation. It can uh, it can be safely stored at room temperature and should not be re refrigerated, uh, but should be kept away from direct sunlight and should be kept on an airtight container because it is volatile. Now, uh, precaution. Long-term use of this ethanol can cause high blood pressure, heart stroke, liver disease, digestive problem, breast cancer, mouth and throat cancers. So that was it for the aromatic waters. Now we move to spirits. Now introduction to spirits, a brief introduction is that spirits are alcoholic, 
or hydroalcoholic solutions or volatile substances, which they are also coal essence and are usually volatile used for flavoring. And for example, we have the peppermint uh, spirit USP, that's not great. Now, preparations include the symbol, uh, methods of preparing uh, spirits include simple solution method and this method involves resolving a drug in alcohol then filtering is done to the solution so as to achieve a sparkling clear product examples of this uh, include the cinnamon spirit chloroform spirit and ether and the second method of preparing spirits is solution with maceration in this method drugs drugs leaves are macerated in purified water to extract water soluble content such as tannins these leaves are then expressed and added in alcohol to dissolve the chlorophyll. This solution is then filtered at the end and the volatile substance is made to evaporate. So for example, pep uh, peppermint spirit is, is uh, extracted from this process. Now process number three is chemical reaction method. In this process, the preparations are made commercially and aromatic spirits such as ammonia NF are prepared by this process. Now it involves taking ethyl nitrile spirit prepared using nitric acid and ethanol in presence of copper. So this one is mainly for commercial purposes. Now experiments expected from spirits are three. The first one is to prepare 15 ml peppermint spirit or whatever the quantity, but using, uh, using the knowledge on working on the reducing formula once you have the you once you have the master formula you know that you are preparing this uh you, you are going to reduce using the reducing factor easily now it means you just check for the first one qs a thousand and you have to prepare 15 ml so it is 15 divided by a thousand you get 0 0.1 0 0.15 as the reducing factor so on your on your working formula or you had a reduced formula, you just come and write peppermint oil, ethanol, and then on the peppermint oil, you come and reduce 0 0.015 times 10, you will get your quantity there. Ethanol, the same, 0 0.01 times 1,000, you will get the, your quantity. So at the end of the day, uh, we go now to the procedure. That is very simple. You calibrate the dispensing bottle as the first option always. Number two, we calculate the required amount of the uh, we requ required quantity of peppermint oil for the total amount of peppermint and pipette it out and transfer it into a dispensing bottle. So the first thing after marking your bottle, you take calculated amount of peppermint oil and you uh, first of all, by bed it into a dispensing bottle. After that, we add ethanol gradually while shaking. Now make sure that, uh, after that you make up the volume uh, until the mark and you attach the label. Now the use of this preparation, that is uh, peppermint spirit, it is used as flavoring agent. So remember the first uh, three experiments, we say that they are used mainly as flavoring agent. So in case of any of these comes, you are in a good position. Now storage, we need to store peppermint spirit on a tightly closed container because also it's volatile. It expires within 10 days from the date of preparation. There is one monograph that is for the peppermint oil and this peppermint oil is a pale yellow volatile with characteristic smell and characteristic test. Now peppermint oil, is manufactured by distillation by steam uh, from by by steel it is prepared manufactured by distillation now peppermint oil is insoluble in water and dissolves in a ratio of one to three volumes of internal ethanol 70 percent that's a typing error there also it can be used as flavoring agent combinative cooling agent and the heat storage of peppermint we store on a tightly closed container to prefer and prefer and should be prevented from direct sunlight and heat on the safety of peppermint we need uh, to avoid our skin because it may cause skin rashes and irritation 
On the experiment number four is to prepare 20 ml chloroform spirit, PP. And the master formula is uh, uh, chloroform 50 ml, which the chloroform is used as preservative and flavoring agent. Ethanol, solvent, preservative, and FECO. The reducing factor for this is 0 0.02. Procedure, we first calibrate the dispensing bottle as obvious. Number two, you measure to calculate the amount of chloroform and put it into the dispensing bottle. So you, you first put the chloroform first, then from there you add ethanol drop by drop, that is not internal, uh, into the dispensing bottle while shaking it. Make sure, make up the volume up to the mark and label the bottle. Now the use of the pre preparation is flavoring agent as, as obvious, and number two, you can use it as uh, preservative. Storage of this uh, of this chloroform spirit is you store on a tightly closed container at room temperature and direction for use expires within 10 days. Remember the other one expires 10 to 15 days. Now we go to syrups. Syrups are concentrated solutions of aqueous uh, sugar, for example, sucrose in water or aqueous liquid which may be medicated, this aqueous liquid may be medicated or non-medicated. So therefore, it can be defined as a liquid preparation of medicinal or flavoring substance in, concentra in a concentrated aqueous solution of sugar. So syrup is said to be medicated when it contains medicinal substance. There are two types of, there are three types of syrups, that is simple syrup, which it is formed by uh, purified water alone which is used as a solution, as a solvent to make the solution. Now, simple medicated syrup, it is a syrup that contains medicinal substance, which uh, whereby the syrup is used as a vehicle and self-preservative for, uh, for that medicine, medicinal substance present in the, in the, med, in the syrups. So for example, the cough syrups, the syrup itself contains a medicinal substance. Now, flavored is another one. This refers to simple syrups having aromatic substances that improve the bitter test of the drugs. Uh, methods of preparations. Preparations of the solutions, but uh, that there are three methods. That is, the first method is preparation of the solutions by heat. This method involves addition of, of sucrose into a solution and introducing a source of it to, to make sure that water dissolves the sucrose completely. Now, it is less time consuming and this is the most effect effective method. And it is used mainly for non-volatile substances that are not affected by heat. On the other hand, we can prepare by agitation without heat. This method is useful for preparing syrups containing volatile substances and this Preparation involves addition of active substance into a solution and agitating it until it dissolves before packaging. The third one, the third option, we have the preparation by medica medicament to syrup. By adding the medicament to syrup, this method involves addition of active ingredients into a syrup solution, for example, tinctures, fluid extracts, and others. Number four is preparation by percolation method. This method involves passing purified water through bed of crystalline sucrose. A pledge of cotton is put on the neck of the percolator and the purified water is added in the percolator containing the sucrose. Now examples of syrups include Simbo syrup USP, syrup PP, Vera Salvet, syrup USP, Thierry syrup NF USP, Acacia syrup, N, F, and U, S, P. Now, number six, we have the hydroxyl hydrochloride syrup, U, S, P. Now, uses of syrup, it is naturally used as preservative because they, they are also used as flavoring agents because they have the high aromatic pressure and they also provide the color to the dosage form. They are used as vehicles they act as stabilizing agents and thickeners and stabilizers. They are used as sweetening agents, 
they are used also to increase viscosity. They are used as binders. And on experiment number five, we are to the object is to prepare 20 gram syrup PP. The master formula includes sucrose six, six, seven grams, and mainly sucrose here is used as sweetening agent and preservative. Purified water QS, uh, a thousand gram, which uh, purified water is used here as a solvent or as a vehicle. The reading factor is 0 0.02, and the procedure begins with the first obvious one that is calibrate your dispensing bottle. Then you weigh the calculated amount of the sugar and put it into a beaker. So for this, you don't put the sugar direct to the dispensing bottle, but instead you take a separate beaker, you place your sugar there. After placing your sugar, you add five to six ml of boil, boiling water and stir it to make sure that all the sugar dissolve on before on the beaker before transferring it into the dispensing bottle. After the full dissolve, after the sugar fully dissolves, you now transfer into the dispensing bottle and you make up your volume and attach the label. So use of the preparation, uh, viscosity increasing agent, sweetening agent, preservative, and on the storage, you have to store at room temperature and do not refrigerate it. Direction for use, it expires within one month from the date of pre preparation. And on one monograph that is there, you have to know about the sucrose, that is C12, H22, zero, uh, oxygen 11. Sucrose is a crystalline colorless, sweet and odorless powder. So it means it is a border or solid. That is, it is a crystalline colorless first, and it is sweet on the test, and it is odorless on the smell. Now, in, it, in nature, it is present mainly in plants, and in particular roots, fruits, and nectars. Commercially, sucrose is extracted and refined from sugar cane. It is very soluble in water and slightly soluble in ethanol. Now, and pharmaceutically, it is used to stabilize proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates, carbohydrates throughout the pharmaceutical formulation. It is also used in as a nutrient. It is also used as sweetening agent. And storage about the sucrose, you store at room temperature on a tightly closed container. And for the safety, you make sure that free from moisture because it's a border. So it, it is hygroscopic. Uh, I mean, it, is, uh, it can observe moisture and can make a solution, not hygroscopic. So it is uh, on the safety part, we have to know the following. In case there is inhalation of sucrose, that person needs uh, enough and sufficient fresh air. And where there is large amount of uh, sucrose swallowed, someone has to drink a lot of water so as to dilute it. Now, in case there is high conduct of sucrose, then you have to rinse with a lot of running water. Now, experiment number six, this is the 15 ml symbol, syrup USP. On the master formula, we have the sucrose purified water only. Now, on the sucrose, we use it as a sweetening agent and preservative. On the purified water, as a solution, we use it as solvent and vehicle. Reducing factor there, we know how to do it. Procedure, we know the first one. Now you weigh, not weight, you weigh the calculated amount of sucrose using the reducing form uh, factor and place it on the picker. Remember to place it on the picker, not on the dispensing bottle. Now you soak it with five to six ml of purified water or just a little water to make it dissolve. And uh, after placing this water, you have to stir. Uh, to make sure it dissolves. After you've seen that it has dissolved completely, you now transfer your content into the from the picker into the dispensing bottle and make up the volume. Uh, and you stick your label and dispense on the dispensing bottle. So the use of preparation is sweetening agent, preservative, is cost increasing. Now storage, you store at room temperature and do not refrigerate it also. That's as the other one. Now it's like when you've known one uh, about the symbol syrup, you know PP. Now, direction for use expires within one month. And on experiment number seven, we have the uh, Ferras Salvet Syrup USP 25 ml. And this one has Ferras Salvet Citric Acid 
vapor mean spirit and sucrose and purified water. So on these five components, ferrous sulfate is used as ion supplement, citric acid is used as antioxidant, vapor mean spirit is used as flavoring agent, remember, sucrose is used as sweetening agent and preservative, while water now here yeah, acts as a solvent in a vehicle. So cutting across everywhere where you meet the sucrose, you need to remember it's a sweetening agent and peppermint spirit aromatic water, we said they are flavoring agents mainly. Now, basing on the reducing factor, I know we know now, number, number procedure one, we know how to go about it. The, number two now is, we are almost saying number two, you just calculate the work, uh, the, the Calculate the working formula using the reduced factor. That's number two. We can attach now after the, the, uh, calculating your dispensing bottle. We can say now the constant second procedure that you should not miss is to calculate the working formula using your reducing factor. After number two, now that one, you now after calculating, you weigh in case they are solid or you measure in case they are liquid. So number three, that uh, you now weigh the acid required and the citric acid in, and you place them into the picker. Now you just dissolve the compounds in the picker by adding 10 to 15 ml of uh, water. That is to make sure that they dissolve them. Now add small portions of sucrose while stirring vigorously to make sure that the entire sucrose dissolves. Now transfer the content into the dispensing bottle and add the peppermint spirit by the help of a bipet, not performing spirit. Now, make up the volume and attach a label to the bottle. Now, use the preparation ferrous sulfate. The use is a martinic, and we have to store it on a tightly closed container at room temperature. And uh, safety, we have to take ferrous sulfate on an empty stomach or uh, avoid taking it with antiacids also or antibiotics within two hours after or before taking ferrous sulfate. So uh, on the other side, we have to see on the monograph, on the monograph of citric acid, which is C6, H8, O7, H2, that's what of crystallization. It is, it is a white odorless crystalline border with strong acidic test. Now, it naturally occur on plant species and may be extracted from lemon trees or pineapple waste. It is purified by recrystallization uh, and monohydrate from the cold concentrated aqueous solution. It is apparently soluble in water. It is, uh, it is its solubility is on a factor of one to one point five parts of ethanol. Now, pharmaceutical use of citric is that it is used as uh, flavoring as well as antioxidant. It is used as buffering agent as well and as a defying agent. But mainly on the preparations, we will come to see that where citric is used as one of the ingredients, it mainly acts as antioxidant. So you mark that one. Citric acid should be stored in airtight container in a cool, dry place. Now, safety. We do not need to take excess citric. Now, use, you need to use clothes and protect your eyes by uh, glasses. Also, while handling citric acid, handle in a well ventilated environment or, dust ma or put on a dust mask, which shall prevent you from the dust from this uh, citric acid. Now, we proceed to the next category of the preparations, that is the mixtures. And by definition, mixtures refers to liquid preparations consisting of one or more medicaments dissolved or suspended or in an aqueous vehicle. Now, mixtures are normally freshly prepared and are used within a month. So that is it now tells about the expiry. You need to know that it's less than a month. Now, it's normally used for a therapy for cause or diarrhea. So for cause or diarrhea. So it means here we have also the use it's either for cough or diarrhea. And we've known the expiry, it is not more than, uh, it is less than a one I mean. Now, examples of these mixtures include magnesium carbonate, mixture PP, magnesium trisilicate, mixture PP, compound sodium chloride, mixture PP, bariatric chuck mixture PP. 
Now, classification, classification of mixtures. Mixtures can be classified as simple mixtures and mixtures containing, containing diffusible mixture. And there is that mixture which contain in diffusible mixture. Now, uh, there is mixture also containing slightly soluble liquids, and there is that mixture containing precipitate, precipitate forming liquid. Now, uh, we have the advantages of mixtures, which is very important here. Yeah? Advantages of mixture is that compared to solid mixtures are have a greater bioavailability. No, mixtures means they are readily available for absorption compared to the solids. Number two, mixtures are, are suitable drugs, are suitable for those drugs which are immiscible and insert uh, some label. Now, number three, it is uh, mixtures are easy to administer because they are easily taken orally. Uh, than solids. Now, number four, they are used for stomach pains such as caused by diarrhea or constipation. That is the function and advantage of mixtures. Now, the advantage of these mixtures is that they are less stable and sometimes incompatible. So it brings a problem. So they are, they, they are not stable to remain the, the mixture for long. That's why the expiry is less than one month. Now, they are less soluble than solids. So they are expensive also in the making. And on experiment number eight, we looked about the uh, preparing of the patriotic, not athletic, patriotic chalk mixture, uh, 25 ml. That is the master formula is uh, not five ml, but 25 ml. Now master formula, we have the chalk powder tracker count, uh, concentrated cinnamon water, syrup, double strength chloroform, and freshly boiled and cooled water. Now, chalk, we are going to use it as antidiarrheal. Border tracker can is used as a suspending agent. Concentrated cinnamon water, remember aromatic water, it is used as flavoring agent mainly and preservative. Syrup, where well, the syrup, you know the sucrose, and now it is used as sweetening agent. Chloroform, it is used as preservative. Freshly boiled water, it is used as fieco. Uh, I said it is 25 ml. Now the reducing factor will come to 0 0.025. Procedure number one is obvious. And number two, weigh the obvious also. After weighing now, uh, the, two, the, two, the first two borders, uh, we transfer the weighted amount of both borders into a motor. For this time, we are taking them into a motor. When it comes to mixtures, we are taking them into the motor. So remember, we came along from the syrups. We came from the spirits where you are using dispensing bottle. But you remember now, every experiment has uh, some specification. Now, when it comes to mixtures, you have to first to weigh. You have to take the weighted amount into the mortar. Now, and a vessel. Then you crush them to a fine particle. Now, add syrup and agitate to form a paste in a mortar. Now, after that, you add concentrated cinnamon water gradually to enhance particle size. Transfer the content now into a calibrated bottle. And you finally make up the volume with water by, and, by rinsing the water and vessel first before the, the water is, the, I mean, the bottle is fully, mark, uh, fu is fully marked up. Now, number eight, you stick the label. And the first and the last procedure, I mean the first two are constant and the last two are constant. Now here in the middle, you need to, to just know the exact preparation and you get the exact procedure by heart. Now use of the preparation, it is used as anti diarrheal uh, storage. It is at room temperature on a tightly closed container, should have writings, shake well before use. Direction for use is expires within 15 days of preparation. So that's it. Uh, that was patriotic chalk mixture. So 15 days uh, after the date of preparation. Now, there are two monographs about the chalk, uh, which chalk also can be named as calcium carbonate, uh, limestone. It is a white outdoorless chalk-like dust, fine borax powder, it decomposes on extreme heating instead of boiling. That's it.
It is manufactured by the process of precipitation or fine particle of calcium carbonate is found naturally as rock mineral. It is insoluble in water and less soluble in alcohol. When added to acid, it dissolves, giving carbon dioxide, and pharmaceutically, it is used as dietary supplement. It is useful for body muscle, bones, nervous system, head, and it is useful as antiacid to relieve head pain. Storage. It is chemically stable, but after 800 degrees Celsius and above, it dissociates into calcium oxides and calcium and carbon dioxide gas. Safety. Uh, it is nanitre and acidas, and if consumed in high quantity, can cause constipation. Uh, the next one monograph is tragacant, which is tasteless, odorless, white, white or yellow border. So it's a border. Tragacant is a border. So tragacant is a cam produced from a plant in twist ripples or flecks that can be bored out. Now it is highly soluble in water, it is insoluble in alcohol, incompatible with strong oxidizing agent, and pharmaceutically it is used for both diarrhea and constipation. It is used as an ingredient in toothpaste and hand It can also work as an excipient and works as a binding agent. Now storage condition for tracker kind is it, you need to keep on a tightly closed container and store it on a cool, dry, and well ventilated area. Now, safety about the tracker can, we need to know that you wash your hand thoroughly after handling it. We need to remove contaminated clothes. It means uh, it is very poisonous. Tracker can needs uh, very good care. You use a well ventilated area. Do not ingest or inhale it. The tracker can do not uh, do not allow it to have uh, contact with your eyes. Now we move the experiment number nine to prepare compound sodium chloride mixture, which is also a mixture. Uh, 25 ml PP, the master formula contains the sodium chloride, which is used as emetic, uh, sodium bicarbonate, which is alkanizer, double strength chloroform, which is a preservative, and purified water QS, which is a solvent. Now, uh, number one as obvious, reducing factor as obvious. Now, number two obvious also weigh. Now, number three, we put the two salts of the weighing, we put into a picker, remember? Mixtures, we are putting them into a picker first. We don't put directly into a dispensing bottle. Now, we add five to, uh, to seven ml. Remember also that we did on their first experiment. So meaning you know, mixtures, we have to be very cautious to make them, to put them into a picker and make them dissolve first before we, we let that transform. Now, after putting them into a picker, we dissolve the, the two salts using water and stir, and uh, using a glass rod, we stir it to make sure that it dissolves completely. After that, we add double strength chloroform water gradually in the picker, containing both salts and water, and mix them properly. Once they mix properly, you transfer the content into the big bottle, and from there, you make up the volume, close the container, and attach the label. The use of preparation is a uh, mythic. Now, it means the storage, you keep the container tightly closed and uh, you can uh, write shake well before use on the label, uh, store in a cool, dry place. Direction for use, it expires four weeks after the date of preparation. Sodium chloride monograph, uh, rock salt, which is NaCl. Now, it is odorless, colorless, crystal salt. Now, sodium chloride is an ionic compound containing one to one ratio of sodium and chloride ions. It is produced synthetically by combining both uh, sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Now, uh, sodium chloride is highly soluble in water. Sodium chloride is soluble in glycerin and formic acid as well. Now, pharmaceutically, sodium chloride is used as Food preservative used as nasal sprays in volatile solutions, used for uh, intravenous therapy, controls asthma and osmoregulatory ability. Uh, also, it, uh, sodium chloride is used as water softening agent for add water. That's another one. Uh, we go to the storage of sodium chloride. We need to store it on a 
room temperature on a on a cool dry place because we say these are solid uh, i mean a border now we moved the precautions of sodium chloride if taken in large quantity it may elevate blood pressure then also may contract muscles and disturbs homeostasis of the body so it should not be taken in large quantity sodium bicarbonate monograph which sodium bicarbonate is the baking soda, soda which is uh, nahco3 uh, that's the formula now sodium bicarbonate is a crystalline white odorless slightly salt that is the test slightly salt is the dust odorless is the smell uh, white is the color it is an ambotheric compound containing sodium cation and bicarbonate anion. So sodium bicarbonate can be prepared by carbon dioxide reaction with sodium hydroxide. And on that, sodium bicarbonate is soluble in water and insoluble in ethanol. Now, pharmaceutically, sodium bicarbonate is used to reduce the stomach acid production. Uh, it is used mainly as and acid to treat the adburn and indigestion. On the storage of sodium bicarbonate is you keep it on a cool, dry place at room temperature. Now, safety is that we don't need to use an overdose of this sodium bicarbonate. So overdose uh, pays up the breathing problems, muscle spasms, and seizure, which occur when you take high doses of sodium bicarbonate. We move to the next category of uh, preparation, that is elixirs. By definition, elixirs are clear, sweetened, hydroalcoholic liquids used for medicinal purposes. They can be taken orally. Now, when used as pharmaceutical preparation, an elixir contains at least one active ingredient. So, in short, we are saying that these elixirs are sweetened. The first thing is that they must be sweetened. And then they are hydroalcoholic uh, preparations also and uh, used for medicinal purposes. So it means here we are using mainly the alcohol as a as, as solvent here. Now there are two types of uh, elixirs. There is non-medicated elixir and there is a medicated elixir. Now, uh, these non-medicated are just the symbol that do not contain any medic medicated agent. Now they are used as solvent and as vehicle uh, preparations for the medicated elixirs. And this includes the aromatic elixir USP, isoalcohol elixir NF. And on the other side, we have the medicated elixir, which these are solutions of active ingredients. So uh, dissolve on nitro alcoholic medium. For example, the antihistamine are used against allergy. The sedative uh, and hypotonic elixirs which are used as sedative, include, including drowsiness and hypoto hypotonic drugs that include induced sleep. Now, uh, we have the sedative, uh, we have also elixirs which are used as expotent, which expotent it is a medicine which promotes the secretion of sputum by the air passage used to treat the cough. And then we have another option, another example also, the other, the, that example which is cough and cold elixirs. It is used in combination of medicine to treat uh, symptoms caused by common flu. Uh, and miscellaneous elixirs, which includes the bacemotomols, are used as analgesics. So methods of preparations, we say they simple methods by agitation. This involves dissolving in water, and alcohols, uh, water soluble and alcohol soluble separately in water and respectively on alcohol. Then you combine them later on. So uh, by uh, when combining, you add the aqua solution into an alcoholic solution. This ensures that high alcoholic strength with minimum separation. So so as to avoid the separation, you take the water solution, I mean the solution we made from the water, you add it into a solution made by alcohol so as to make sure there is minimum separation. Now, we have the uh, second one being the, uh, another preparation you say we add the mixture 
of two or more liquids. This is prepared from mixing two or more liquid solution resulting to a clouded solution. Talac is used as adsorbent to oil and filters out from the solution. Now, examples of elixirs. We have the uh, buffering agents, gelating agent, preservatives, coloring agents, flavoring agent, sugar and sugar substitute. Elixirs are used temporarily to relieve symptoms caused by common flu, cold allergies, and treating illness. Number two, elixirs are used uh, for therapeutic benefits. Now, number three, they are used as excipients or solubilizing agents during pharmaceutical oral preparations. Now, official examples of elixirs include the aromatic Alexa USP, isoalcoholic Alexa NF, chloram, chloramphenamine, maliate Alexa USP, Alexa Osagerin PPC, compound benzene aldehyde Alexa NF. And on experiment number 10, we are preparing the 20 ml Alexa Osagerin PPC. Master formula includes the sergarine, which is used as sweetening agent, sodium bicarbonate, which is used as under acid, ethanol, which is used as a preservative, purified water, which is used as a solvent for the sodium bicarbonate, which is, the, is used as under acid. Now, reducing factor, because we are preparing uh, 20 ml, we are using 0 0.02. So depending on your quantity, I know it's now a problem to it's not now a problem to reduce your formula. Now, number two, uh, number one is obvious and the procedure number two was we yes, we calculate and weigh both the borders. After weighing, now we measure the calculated amount, volume of ethanol uh, into the dispensing bottle and keep it closed. Now, we add and we, the weighted amount of saturine into the dispensing bottle, which contains now the ethanol. So remember, we have the ethanol uh, in the dispensing bottle for the first time. So the second time we now come and add the saturine into a dispensing bottle bearing what ethanol. Now we dissolve it by shaking the ethanol uh, so as to dissolve the saturine which we've recently added. Now we add, after adding the saturine, we add the sodium bicarbonate into the, I mean on a separate, on a separate uh, procedure, we come to sodium bicarbonate, we first have to dissolve it in water by taking the sodium bicarbonate in a picker, separate picker. Now remember the other one, we were doing it on a dispensing bottle. Now, after putting the surgery in and making sure it is dissolved, you leave it to stand and you proceed with the second part of the procedure that is dissolving the sodium bicarbonate in water. Now you dissolve by stirring on a picker and then after the complete solution, uh, after a good, uh, all sodium bicarbonate dissolved, you now transfer the, the content uh, from the picker into the dispensing bottle. The dispensing bottle, remember you have the ethanol and you have the surgery in which you first introduce the ethanol and then you introduce the surgery in later on and you shake it to make sure it dissolves. Now on this other side, you had the sodium bicarbonate and you take you took four to five ml of purified water and dissolve it or no complete the uh, complete dissolution you now bring the peak the content in the picker and transfer it into the dispensing bottle now then you stir and transfer after transferring it to into the bottle you now rinse the picker and to make sure that all content is transferred and you make up the volume close the container and fix the label the use of this preparation is used as anti acid and uh, it is stored on a tightly closed container and which is light resistant. Now, uh, direction for use, it expires within uh, 30 days of preparation. For, that is from the date of preparation. Now we move to uh, monograph, saccharine. Saccharine it is a white outdoorless crystalline border with intensity testing sweet. So it means it is very sweet it is white and it is odorless. So uh, it is made from laboratory by oxidation of chemicals and it is also soluble in water and sparingly soluble in ethanol. It is used as sugar substitute. It is used in masking beta drugs and stored on a, because it's a chemically uh, stable. So you need to store it on a cool, dry place because we say it is a crystalline border. So, you note know, that which is written here, strong. 
Now, another thing is safety. Uh, if consuming large quantity, you make sure that you drink, you, I mean, you should not take in large quantity because it can lead to uh, bladder cancer. It can also cause nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. Now, that was it about the next task. We go to the next category about the solutions. Now, by definition, solutions are more, are, uh, are defined as liquid preparations containing one or more chemical substance usually dissolved in water. So it is viscous preparation which are dissolved in water. So it contains one or more chemical constituent. Methods of preparation of these suspend, uh, solutions. We say we have the simple solution method as the first one. It is a solution in this method, it involves that uh, we dissolve a single substance on in a solvent. That is symbol. Uh, you take one single substance and you dissolve in the solvent. They are used for medicinal agents uh, or as a vehicle ingredients in complex preparation. For example, calcium hydroxide solution USP, boric acid solution NF, strong iodine, iodine solution drug USP. Number two, we have the chemical reaction method. This involves reacting two or more ingredients chemically together in order to form a solution in a stable solvent, for example, the aluminum acetate and magnesium citrate solution. Number three, symbol solution method with sterilization. This preparation is carried out by autoclaving so as to ensure sterile products, for example, anticoagulant solution, uh, physio physiological solution, ophthalmic solution. Uh, number four, we have the extraction with sterilization. This method also involves involve the use of vital cleaving. Extraction by, with sterilization will say that uh, this method involves uh, deriving chemical substance from vegetables and animal origins while maintaining sterile environment. And as I said, it can be done on auto cliff. So the types of solutions that we have is the solid solutions, liquid solution, cashier solution. The experiment uh, that could be, uh, that are done, include the preparation of the triatic, ferrous sulfate, oral solution, PP. And for this case, we are using 25 ml. Now, from the master formula, we have the ferrous sulfate, of the hydrate, which is used as a martinic, ascorbic acid, which is antioxidant. Remember, we had the other side, citric acid. Citric acid, ascorbic acid, mainly used as antioxidant. So remember the similarity. Orange syrup, which is used as flavoring agent, a sweetening agent. On the other side, we had the syrup or the sucrose. Remember, those are the agents which are used as flavoring or mainly for sweetening. Double strength chloroform, which is used as preservative, Water, water sufficient to produce a thousand ml, and this water is used as solvent or vehicle. The using formula is obvious. Uh, now to calculate calibration is the first one on the procedure. The second one, after that, you reduce the quantity you weigh, and from there you move to the that procedure, which is that in a picker you add calculated volume of double strength chloroform and ascorbic acid. So from there, uh, you add sulfate, sulf, uh, sulfate, after hydrate into a pika and dissolve it. So finally, you add orange syrup and shake it well, then transfer the content into a dispensing bottle already marked. So to understand this procedure, we first begin from after weighing your substance, that is the two borders, that is ferrous sulfate, hydrated, and ascorbic acid. You now combine them in a pika. So having them combined and uh, dissolved, so after that dissolution, you add orange syrup. Now from there, you transfer them in, you shake well and transfer them into a dispensing bottle, which is already marked. Number six, we make up the volume by rinsing the picker and boring the content into the, in, uh, into the bottle until the mark. So you fix the label and dispense on the dispensing bottle. Use of the preparation in Martinic, uh, we store, on a tightly closed container, which is light resistant and direction for use is expires within 15 days from the date of preparation. Now, 
the monographs, which are there are three, the ferrous sulfate, heptahydrate, which is FSO4 and contains water of crystallization. Ferrous sulfate is ficanary. Uh, I mean, that is the test, ficanary. Uh, blue or green, that's the color. Crystalline solid powder. Uh, containing metallic test, yeah. Now, uh, ferrous sulfate is a salt of mineral ion two sulfate of the hydrate. Now, it is an O of ion molecule containing ion sulfate of the hydrate. It is soluble in water and it is its solubility in alcohol is negligible and moderately soluble in acids. Pharmaceutically, pharmaceutically it is used as imatinic. So, wherever you see ion sulfate. That is imatinic. Now storage, it is stored on a tightly closed container on a dry place. You need to avoid using it because it can cause uh, skin irritation on exposure, which is serious, and also causes a serious eye irritation. And on the ascorbic acid, which was used as the antioxidant, which ascorbic acid is vitamin C, as we know, that is the structural formula, and it is a crystalline white so yellow solid that is colorless or light, light yellow and uh, it is odorless with a pleasant citric acid test test for for the mouth no this test is a wrong spelling there it's it naturally occurs in citrus fruits and it is produced industrially by the d sobitol obtained from cassava and wheat now it is soluble in water, in ethanol, and insoluble in ether, chloroform, oils, fats, and benzene. Pharmaceutically, ascorbic acid is important reducing and oxidizing agent. Functions mainly as antioxidant, remember. Now, nutritionally, it is used as flavoring agent and preservative. Now, the storage condition is that they should be kept free from oxidizing agent and strong bases. So uh, it should be protected also from air and sunlight. So safety for this one, you, uh, for the ascorbic acid, we need to know that high doses may cause acute liver injury, jaundice, symptoms on the exposure include the irritating skin or high or respiratory tract. And on the other side, we had the monograph for orange syrup, which orange syrup, uh, Another name could be the syrup, orange syrup peel, citric acid syrup, and it is uh, it is a liquid uh, that tastes like orange peel. Uh, it does it does light orange color. It is sweet on testing. Now and on the master formula for this one because we had to. We had a different to prepare it because it has a different preparation formula. So we had a master formula, which on this master formula, we had the ingredient being the sweet orange peel tincture. We had the citric acid and we had the talc and sucrose in purified water. Now, remember, we had these components, which the sweet orange peel tincture was used as the sweetening agent and flavoring agent. So citric acid now on this uh, syrup, orange syrup, remember it is used as antioxidant stabilizer. So other than citric acid being antioxidant, it is now here used as antioxidant stabilizer. Because uh, we have talc here, talc, talc also is used as distributing agent. And now sucrose is a sweetening agent, preservative and stabilizer as well. So uh, purified water is used as solvent. So on the procedure for this preparation of orange syrup, we first of all triturate. Of course, we triturate uh, because it's a separate procedure. Now it depends if it is comes to a main. Now you can first of all begin with the obvious, calibrate after that, you weigh. After weighing, you triturate now. Uh, you put the atalak into a mortar and you tagerate with a tincture. That tincture is a uh, sweet orange peel tincture. Now, you tagerate uh, the talc with the tincture and citric acid gradually uh, as you add 
uh, purified water. Now it means uh, you you put the talak tincture and citric acid on a mortar. Then you touch red by adding water gradually. Now after that, you filter, returning the first portion of the filtrate in until it becomes clear and wash the mortar and filter using sufficient water, not excess, but enough and sufficient water to make sure that you dissolve and you rinse uh, very well. So as to obtain the required, the filtrate should be held on a dispensing. Pot. Now add sucrose in this filtered content by agitation without heat and make up the volume with purified water and mix and strain them. And you attach the label and finally you have your orange syrup solution. So it means uh, on this solution, this one is a minor one, but it is important to know that uh, the first thing we are doing, we are combining the talac with tincture, that is orange peel tincture and citric acid together on a mortar. And on this mortar, we take, we just take a little uh, purified water, which using your reduced formula, you can uh, find it as, depending on the amount of volume given there, you, it could be 20. So once you have your reducing formula 0 0.2, you come and reduce this 100 ml by the factor 0 0.02. Uh, which can be four or five ml. So from there, you add, uh, I've said you add the talac tincture and uh, now you dissolve it and uh, citric acid, you dissolve using the water. After that, you go to the, that you filled out the first portion and you return it. And once you have filled out it, you wash again the water and you transfer your content into the dispensing bottle. Now on the dispensing bottle, you add sucrose. So remember, you are not adding sucrose to the first uh, part of the procedure which you are using the mortar. The sucrose is added when you've transferred your uh, orange peel tincture combined with talac combined with citric acid. So that's it. Uh, after that addition, you now make up the volume and the procedure goes on as usual. I hope it's very clear now. Now pharmaceutical syrup is used a sweetening agent, a flavoring agent, and in other uh, pharmaceutical preparations, stability of the orange syrup. Uh, mainly, uh, you need to preserve on a tightly closed container in a cool, dry place and do not refrigerate as the other syrups also we need. Now, because refrigerating it, do what recrystallize the sucrose. So you need to highlight that and remember, because that's the reason we were not uh, refrigerating the other syrups. That is simple syrup, uh, uh, simple syrup and uh, syrup PP. Because we were saying, keep you on a cool dry place, but do not refrigerate. So the re reason for not refrigerating is because it can re recrystallize. Uh, precaution, do not use orange syrup that show indication of smell or it has some hot or it has a test because this could indicate that this orange syrup is deteriorated. Now with that, we come to an end of that portion. We move to the second, another portion of the magma. And by definition, magma is a two-phase system with large particle size or molecules of small distance particle. Now it is, it is absolute semi-solid dosage form. So it is semi-solid, it does it form. It's almost solid, but it's not completely solid. So they are, they are water insoluble particles, thick and viscous, that, and are intended for oral root administration. They differ from gels in that they are suspended particles. They are suspended particles are large. So on this, we say that they are insoluble. They are not soluble in water and their particles are very large and they look like gels they, because we say they are semi-solid. But gels have smaller particles, meaning this uh, magma has larger particles themselves. So that's it. 
on the methods of preparation of this magma, it, there are two methods, the simple hydration method and chemical reaction method. Simple hydration method, this involves sprinkling the apparent substance on hot water. For example, preparation of pentanite magma is done by sprinkling pentanite magma on in water. And number two, we said the chemical reaction method. It is prepared mainly by involving chemical react, react, reacting, chemical reaction between sodium hydroxide and magnesium sulfate. For example, examples of magma include the pentanite magma, magnesium magma, bismuth magma. All magma should have the label shape well before use. Now in experiment 12, we, we look the the object being to prepare pentanite magma USP 20 grams. The master formula has two ingredients only. That is pentanite magma, which is used as a suspending agent, purified water, which is a solvent. Reducing factor because we are preparing 20 grams, and there we have a QS uh, 1000. So it is 20 divided by 1000. We get the reducing factor. And from the reducing factor, we get the working formula. Uh, procedure uh, the one, number one is to calibrate. I think this is wrong. It should have been uh, 20 ml. Yeah, the calculated amount of pentanite magma and take around 16 ml of distilled water. That's the, enough to dissolve this or to so for after measuring, we first take the distilled water into a picker. From there, we sprinkle the pentanite magma portions into the picker. After addition of pentanite, we allow it to become thoroughly wetted. After that, we allow it to stand with occasional stirring using the plastron. Now, after stirring, we continue until it forms a uniform. Uh, we transfer the uniform magma from the picker now into the dispensing bottle uh, that has been marked already. So we make up the volume up to 20 ml, not 25. And the use of this preparation is suspending agent mainly it is stored by keeping it on a tightly closed container at room temperature and it is you uh, direction for use should be shake well before use and expires within 15 days from the date of preparation monograph of pentanite it is a mineral sub pentanite it uh, it is a crystalline border green yellow color in color and it is odorless so it has a salt dust, dust like and it occurs naturally as a colloidal hydrate of aluminum silicate found in Canada, and it is extracted mainly by the O process. That is a mining process. Now, uh, it is insoluble in water and alcohol, insoluble in fixed oil and class uh, and class ring. Now, it is used primarily as a suspending agent in form of for pharmaceutical preparation. And storage, it is stored on a tightly closed container because pentanite is highly hygroscopic. Now, uh, on the precaution and safety, we have to maintain normal safety practices and handle it with clothes and operate on a well ventilated room. We move to the another category that was about the magma. We move to the suspension. Suspension, by definition, is a liquid dosage form containing finely divided and dissolved drug particle dispersed throughout a liquid vehicle in which the drug exhibit minimum degree of solubility. So it is mainly used to provide liquid dosage form for insoluble drugs. Types of suspensions, the suspension could be classified according to their characteristics of the dispersed phase, dispersion media, or route of administration. Based on the dispersed phase, it can be divided into coarse suspensions, colloidal suspensions, non suspension. And based on the concentration, and the type of dispersion media, it can be divided into aqueous and aqueous. And based on the root administration, it can be divided as oral, topical, ophthalmic, nasal suspensions. Examples of these suspensions prepared on the lab could include the calamine topical suspension USP and acid oral suspension USP. And the confusion oral suspension USP, pentonite oral suspension USP, Carbamacitin oral suspension USP NF, hydrocortisol rectal suspension USP, sulfamatoxol, and tri tri trimetoprime oral suspension USP. And on experiment 13, uh, we have an object of preparing 25 ml of calamine topical suspension USP. Master formula of uh, preparing this 
topical suspension of calamine, it has to include the calamine, zinc oxide, glycerin, and uh, bentonite magma. And we also have calcium hydroxide. So we have uh, the five, the five in, uh, ingredients here, that is calamine, zinc oxide, glycerin, bentonite magma, and calcium hydroxide. So calamine is antipyretic, zinc oxide is astringent and protective, uh, glycerin is a wetting agent, pentonite magma flocculating agent, and uh, calcium hydroxide is uh, astringent. Uh, reducing formula because we are preparing 25, it's 0 0.025. The first procedure is obvious. The second, we now place the uh, weight, the weight uh, solids into the water. From there, we dilute it with pentonite magma with equal, I mean, on a separate, we dilute pentonite magma with equal volume of calcium hydroxide topical solution. Now you mix the water in the mortar uh, with a glass for intimately with about 2.5 ml magma. Then you it until a smooth paste is formed. Now gradually incorporate the remaining amount of magma. Then you transfer the content into the bottle, which was initially marked, and you make up the volume. Uh, with calcium hydroxide and attach the label. So to make sure we understand this one, we say that after calibrating, you place your solids, that is the solids includes the calamine and zinc oxide. So after that, you put these two solids into a mortar. From there, you dilute it with the dilute pentonite magma. So from here, you you add equal amount of uh, topical, I mean, uh, calcium hydroxide. And then you mix these powders using the glass rod. Uh, I mean, using the glass rod. Then from there, you have to incorporate the glycerin. That is the wetting agent. After that, you have to make sure that you mix this, you, you gradually incorporate the remaining portion of magma, and then you transfer the content into the bottle, which was initially marked. So you make up the volume and attach. So use of, the, of this preparation is antipyretic. Uh, storage, it is store, you store in a tightly closed container. Direction for use, you check well before use, expiry four weeks from the date of preparation. And on the monograph, we have the calamine, calamine lotion. It is a fine pink powder, powderless and distillless. It is made up by mixing, grinding, clearing uh, of a liquid preparation extracted from limestone and prepared from a lab by reacting zinc oxide and ion two oxide. Uh, it is insoluble in water and slightly soluble in alcohol. Soluble in mineral oil and acid. It is insoluble in ether. It is used to treat mild itchiness from sun pants and insect bites. Poisonous oak and it is used as antipyretic. Storage we store at room temperature um, of about 25 degrees Celsius on a closed container, precaution, wash, the skin in case it, it comes to contact with you using uh, using a lot of soap and a lot of water and allow it to dry before applying the color mine. That is in case you are applying. So you check the color mine preparation well before use. And on the monograph for zinc oxide, the, which zinc oxide is also known as Chinese white or SNO. It is white powder, odorless and metallic test. Uh, it is produced from the lab by oxidation process of zinc with oxygen, to, that is will obtain zinc oxide. It is obtained by electrolysis, it is also obtained by electrolysis of sodium bicarbonate with zinc product, which would form and produce zinc oxide. It is insoluble in water and slightly soluble in ethanol, but soluble in dilute acid, dilute bases and acetate. Pharmaceutically, zinc is used uh, in soap ointment, such as dental and food powder. Now, it protects the skin from absorbing 
the ultraviolet rays from the sun pulse. Now, regarding the storage of zinc oxide, it is sto uh, stored on a tightly closed container in a cool, dry place because it's a border, remember, and uh, protect, protect it from physical damage. Handling precaution, you wash your hand after handling it and avoid contact with your skin. Uh, you keep under uh, good hygiene and safety practice. Monograph of calcium hydroxide, which is also called lime or CaOH, and you put into the bracket too, which is the, the oxidation number for the calcium. Now, in the, it is a white colorless border with hot smell and bitter taste. Now it is produced by mixing quick lime with water by the process of slaking. It is prepared in the laboratory by mixing the aqueous solution of calcium chloride and sodium hydroxide. It is soluble in water and insoluble in alcohol. Solu soluble also in glycerin and acid. So pharmaceutically, uh, calcium hydroxide is used as medicinal salve. It is also used as a filling agent. It is used as a neutralizing agent. It is used as PF buffering agent in various preparations. So storage of calcium hydroxide is that we stored in non-corrosive cabinet. Uh, you keep it on a tightly closed container away from strong acids. The safety in case of uh, you come into contact with this, you have to wash your hand thoroughly after handling it. You have to use adequate ventilation ventilated room and you avoid contact with the skin or high. Monograph, the, the next monograph is monograph of glycerin which is C3H8O3, which glycerin is a viscous hygroscopic liquid, which is colorless, odorless, and sweet tasting. It is obtained from oils and fats, resulting as byproducts of soap and fatty acid manufacturing. It is obtained naturally by sugar fermentation. It is soluble in water and 95% ethanol. It is insoluble in benzene and chloroform. Pharmaceutical glycerin is used as oral, optic, ophthalmic, topical, and parental formulation. It is used as sweating agent. So we store it on a tightly closed container away from it because glycerin is hygroscopic and decomposes on eating. Safety in case you need just to maintain, in case you come into contact, with the glycerin, you need to make sure that you do the normal uh, regular practice and you maintain the normal precautions and use appropriate quantities. And also while handling it, it is good you take the precaution of using the gloves while being vigilant and maintaining what is expected. Now we move to the next, uh, that last, the emulsions. Uh, by definition, emulsion is a mixture of two or more liquids that are normally immiscible owing to the to the liquid phase separation. Now, in a dimension, one liquid contains is contained as a, di a dispersion of the other liquid. Now, the dispersed phase forms the internal, while the dispersing phase forms the external phase. Now, types of emulsions, not emulsions. We have water in oil emulsions, oil in water emulsions, multiple emulsions. Advantages of emulsions, they are less bulky and simple packaging. They are also useful in a new uh, in an in an in administering drugs that are poorly soluble in water but rapidly soluble in oil. Uh, another advantage of these emulsions includes that is a uh, it is used to mask beta testing uh, beta test on drugs that is by adding sweetening and flavoring agents. It is possible to add, even if they are immiscible by true emulsion, at least it can mask and it can uh, bring a, a sweet test to, to drugs with pita test. Drugs are more stable, especially in oil. So that's another advantage of this emulsion. Uh, the fifth advantage is that in raffinous emulsion contrast, media assist in diagnosis of various diseases and various uh, internal problems of the body. Now, emulsion prolonged drug release time 
and uh, also emulsions are essential in nutrients which can be administered by emulsifying the food. Emulsion also enhances drug administration to the patients who have difficulty in swallowing solid forms of the drugs. Emulsion protects, protects the drug from which they are susceptible to oxidation and hydrolysis. Emulsion are useful in making quality lotion, creams, and, and, and elements. The uh, disadvantages of emulsion is that they are thermally unstable. Uh, emulsions are difficult to manufacture. Emulsions also uh, require specific storage con conditions, which may be difficult because they are a little bit unstable. So, uh, we have also the bulk and it is difficult to transport and are prone to container breakages. They are liable to microbial contamination, which can lead to cracking. Also emulsions, it is difficult to achieve uniform and accurate dose. So on the 14 experiment, we have to see on the preparing 25 ml mineral oil emulsion USP which with a master formula of, uh, of mineral oil, acacia, syrup, and phenylene, and alcohol. Now, acacia is used as a emulsifying agent, syrup is sweetening and thickening agent, phenylene, flavoring agent, alcohol, preservative. Purified water also is used as vehicle. Procedure, the first one is obvious. Now, after calibrating and doing that, we mix the mineral oil with acacia as the first one in a dry, in a dry mortar and we titrate uh, a mixture of mineral oil and acacia. Number three, we take the purified water and emulsified in a mixture and titrate it well until a smooth homogeneous emulsion is formed. The fourth procedure is that in a, in a separate picker, we now take and make phenylene helicon by placing phenylene in ethanol. So we take a little ethanol on a, on a different picker and on this picker uh, which contains ethanol, we add the phenylene. So this makes what we call the phenylene helicot. So that's how it's a simple procedure which is just involved two steps. Taking a picker, you take your ethanol, a small amount, then you add the phenylene. And that is what we call the phenylene helicot. Now, uh, in the fifth procedure, after having this phenylene on a separate one, and you remember you had mixed your mineral oil and acacia on a dry mortar, then you've added the uh, water to emulsify it and titrate it until a smooth emulsion forms. So you have on a separate pica phenylene helicot. Now, in divided portions, now we titrate each of the adding. We now uh, add syrup followed by phenylene. And finally, followed by water, which will make it, we will make up the volume. So it's like having done this uh, phenylene, you now bring your 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 titrated, homogeneous and smooth emulsion of mineral oil and acacia into a dispensing bottle. I, it's not indicated here, but you bring now into a dispensing bottle, and from here you now had the syrup and after adding the syrup you titrate it because we say in divided portions you don't add everything at once you add in portions remember then each portion you want you make sure you titrate so from there you you make sure that uh, you add you add phenylene and finally, you make up the volume. So you label and label the preparation and close it tightly. So I think that's it. Uh, the most important part is to remember how the phenylene, phenylene helicot is prepared. That is by little alcohol, and then you put the uh, phenylene. So use of this preparation is cathartic. Uh, storage, it's stored on a tightly closed container, expires 15 days. Monograph, we had the monograph of mineral oil, which is a liquid petroleum. Uh, it's paraffin oil, that's another name. It is a transparent viscous oil, liquid, colorless in color, powderless, 
it smell tasteless tasteless uh, it is manufactured by fractional distillation of petroleum it is insoluble in water and alcohol it is soluble in acetone and benzene benzene chloroform and ether pharmaceutically mineral oil is used as excipient in topical formulation such as emollient ointment bases vehicles solvent lubricant and it is also used as laxative and cosmetic in cosmetic and food products so uh, storage of mineral oil is that because mineral oil and of course uh, oxidation when exposed to it and light so it needs to be stored on a, a light resistant in a cool dry place and away from heat safety avoid inhaling fibers and wear protective clothing while handling this mineral oil it is in, uh, it is inflammable and also use avoid prolonged use it can cause allergic reaction monograph of acacia these are thin flux granules borders that are white or yellow that's the color and they are odorless and they have a plant test now it is dried it is a dried cam it is a dry cam exudent obtained from stem or branches of acacia or similar species the bark of the tree incised and ex excited to dry which is collected to remove uh, which which is collected by this process to remove by removing the bark of a particular matter and graded. Now it is soluble in colorless cold water. It is insoluble in ethanol. It is soluble in one to twenty glycerin and one to twenty propyl propyl glycot. Uh, pharmaceutically, acacia is used as a suspending agent, emulsifying agent, tablet binder, stabilizing agent. And bioadhesive. It is used in cosmetic, food, and sprays, and also it is used uh, in, to provide the flavors. Now, storage of the acacia. It is acacia generally is susceptible to enzyme enzymatic degradation, and it can be preserved by boiling or adding preservative and stored on an airtight container or on a cool dry place. So on the precaution and measures of handling it, you observe the normal precaution because acacia can be irritating to the eye and skin, but uh, you put on clothes and dust respirators. Monograph for phenylene. Phenylene uh, has this for structure, C8H8, zero, uh, oxygen three. Uh, crystalline, uh, I mean, this is the nature, it is a crystalline needle like water that is white or creamy it is somehow creamy yeah and then uh, it is uh, it has vanilla order that is smell, uh, smell and then it has sweet testing and uh, it occurs naturally in both of vanilla ponifolia industrially is prepared from liquid uh, it is slightly soluble in water soluble in methanol and ethanol soluble also in Diethyl ether, acetone, benzene, and chloroform. Pharmaceutically, it is used as flavoring agent, therapeutic agent uh, for sickle cell anemia and fungal uh, infections. Now, it is also used in syrups and excipients and tablet mask and in tablet masking. Uh, that's it. Vanilla or oh, vanilla is also stored on a cool, dry place away from light and heat because it is oxidized slowly on moist air and is affected by light that is why it should be kept in cool and tightly closed container away from it now observe the normal precautions and uh, we move to the next second last portion that is powder powder is defined as a substance consisting of ground uh, of well ground or finely grounded pulverized or otherwise finely dispersed solid particles alternatively it can be defined as dry solid substance composed of finely divided drugs with or without excipients and are intended for internal or external use. Now, advantages of powders includes that they are stable than liquids, that's an advantage. So it, it can be used for a longer time. So they are stable than liquids. Uh, they, all, they are also more convenient 
to swallow the dampless of capsules. Number three, they can be prepared into granules for use in preparing tablets or reconstituting liquid form. They are useful also in eliciting therapeutic action because they have light surface area to volume ratio. That's a credit for bioavailability. Now, uh, cost by absorption. Number five, we have they are used in reducing bulk drugs with large dose to similar quantities. And the disadvantages of borders, not borders, it is hard to mask the unpleasant test. It is difficult to protect borders. Remember the word spelling containing microscopic deliquescent or, or aromatic materials for the convulsion. Now, confession. Number three, my time and expenses are required in preparing for a uniform border to be obtained. Now, a patient also may misunderstand the correct method of use and dose, which is a problem. Examples of borders is omeprazole, magnesium sulfate, ferrous sulfate, atropine sulfate. Those are examples. Uh, we have also codine being as the fifth example. And on experiment 15, we could see the preparation of 20 gram oral rehydrating salt PP. Master formula contains sodium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, potassium chloride, and hydrous glucose. And this has sodium chloride being to correct the electrical imbalance. Uh, sodium bicarbonate corrects electrical imbalance. Potassium chloride corrects electrical imbalance. And hydrous glucose is to provide energy source. So, it's like on this ORS, the, we have the four solids, I mean three solids providing correction of electrical imbalance. And uh, glucose is just providing energy source. Procedure, you take the dry, clean water and vessel. Then from there you add by sodium bicarbonate and potassium chloride and you titrate it. And you add sodium chloride and titrate it also. You add an hydrous glucose and digerate it as well. And then finally, you pack it, you transfer your mixture, I mean your, your border, into a packaging paper and label your preparation. So it is used for rehydration and electrical replacement. Uh, storage, you store in a cool, dry place. Remember, it's a border. Expiry is six months. That's longer expiry. And lastly, we have about uh, we have uh, the last preparation being the ointment. So ointment, by definition, is a semi-solid preparation intended for external application to the skin or mucosa membrane. They are they are usually, but not always, containing medicinal substance. So at times it can contain medicinal substance. At times they do not contain. So but it is used mainly to, pre to protect the skin also against the UV and against the germs and that's it. Uh, at times it can be used to, for medicinal substances. So that's why it can contain or it cannot contain. Now, uh, uses of ointment, we say that it is used as vehicle for topical applicant of active medicinal ingredient. Or basically, it can function as protective to the skin or as an emollient. On experiment 17, we can look at it as uh, prepare 15 gram of calamine, or which is also known as internal, not internet. This is a wrong spelling. So, official formula we say we have the calamine. Finally, we only have two things here. That is uh, two ingredients, calamine, which is finally sifted, which is used as antipyretic and protective. We have white soft paraffin, which is ointment paste or emollient. So the first procedure, you calculate the quantity, reduce quantities. From there, you titrate calamine powder with roughly equal volume of white soft. If you remember, we are doing the dilution, geometric dilution, which you take the equal volume first. Then from there, you increase the volume, you increase equal volume and until you use the, the ointment paste completely. Now you mix it until smooth, until it becomes smooth, and then you gradually incorporate the remaining, the remainder of white soft paraffin. You continue adding gradually until 
all calculator soft paraffin is fully used. Uh, once all white soft paraffin has been used, we will continue titrating until a thoroughly smooth ointment is obtained. So you dispense in a packaging provided and label it, and this and it is used as antipyretic and protective. Storage you store in a cool, dry place, and it expires within six months from the date of preparation. Thank you, and I wish you the very best. And in case there is nothing, uh, there is something which is not clear, we can clarify, and you can also count a check from your manual. Thank you and goodbye. Subscribe to our channel for more information and simplified work, which is made this year for you. Thank you and bye.